family, I wanted to take a moment um, just to say thank you to uh, the members uh, of Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church family. Listen, I've been looking at the analytics on uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our uh, website uh, and studying those analytics. I know that doesn't mean much to you, but I want you to know um, that our viewership, our those who are worshiping with us on Sunday and on Wednesday, visiting our website afterwards, uh, those numbers are up by 60%. I, I know the word analytics doesn't mean much to you and I know uh, that probably doesn't you know doesn't really excite you but what I want you to understand is what that means is 60% more people are uh, being reached with the good news of Jesus Christ 60% more people are being encouraged through the worship and um, study that we do and and I know that you know it's not just analytics it's because you continue to invite people to worship with us on Sunday and study with us on Wednesday it's because you keep sharing the broadcast uh, on your various uh, social media platforms and I wanted to take a moment to just say thank you please continue to share continue to invite because what you do is helping us reach so many more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ I'll see you in a minute and peace be with you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Mark Thomas. We want to welcome you to our virtual Christian experience here at Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church in Lake Charles, Louisiana. 
Under the leadership of Pastor E.J. Kemper III, we hope something that will be said or done will make you want to come back and worship with us again. God bless you and have a great day. Well, God bless your family. We want to tell God thank you for each and every one of you joining us on this Sunday morning. Uh, to all of our members and then to all of our virtual visitors, thank you. God bless you. We are so uh, grateful that you have joined us for this worship experience on this morning. Uh, before we go into worship on this morning, I want to do what we do every Sunday, and that is take a moment to pray for you. So if you have a prayer request, I ask that you would put it in the comment section right now. Uh, we're going to go to God in prayer on your behalf. Let us pray now. Lord, we pause in this moment, oh God, because we recognize our need for you, Lord. We recognize, Lord, that it's you that we're leaning and we're depending on. And then, Lord God, we recognize that your word says that uh, you are a strong tower, that the righteous run therein and find safety, Lord. And so now, God, I pray for everyone who's watching now, everyone who's gathered physically and virtually, oh God. I give them a portion of this prayer, Lord. I pray that you would, Lord, search their needs, oh God, and their desires, and that you would have mercy, oh God, if it be your will, that you would bless them and bless them indeed. Lord, I just tell you, thank you for this opportunity to worship you, God, to give you the praise, to, to hear your word, Lord God. And so, Father God, Feel this place with your spirit right now. We know that whatever we do, we come up short, oh God. But with your spirit, oh God, we can be excellent in all that we lay our hands to do. And so now in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would receive our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. My heavenly Father's children said amen, amen. Family, family, don't let us worship by ourselves, but worship with us now. <laughs>
Because you are, you are wonderful, oh God. And so now, Lord God, as we go into this moment, Father, Lord, we need a word from you, Father God. We tell you thank you for these songs of praise, oh God, that testify of your goodness, oh God, and your faithfulness to us, oh God. And so now, Lord, I ask that even as you have been with us in song, that you will be with us in word now, Lord. I can't do anything without you, Father God. But with you, I can do all things, Lord God. Through Christ, that strengthens me. And so, Lord, speak in this place right now. In Jesus' name we pray. All my Heavenly Father's children said, Amen. Amen. We're going to give our praise team some love right now. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's give them some love now in the comment section. I tell you, thank you for your faithfulness our music ministry God bless you thank you for your faithfulness 
It's such a powerful, powerful experience when we are faithful. God uses that faithfulness. Now, put me down just a little bit. God uses that faithfulness and he maximizes that faithfulness. God can do with our faithfulness what we cannot do with our talent alone. Amen. Amen. Family, again, thank you for joining us on this, uh, for this worship experience on today. We are in the midst of our summer series. It's our tradition here at Pilgrim that every summer we engage in a relationship series. And so strengthening all those relationships and so on. This summer, we're in a series called Squad Goals. Amen. We're strengthening uh, our squad. I'm so excited about uh, these last few weeks. I want to tell you that if you enjoy Enjoyed, if you've enjoyed this series thus far, uh, don't miss what God has coming up in the next few weeks, especially on Fifth Sunday. We've got a, a very, very special treat for you on Fifth Sunday. I'm not going to uh, tell you what it is just yet, but don't you dare miss it. Amen. We're going to have some very special guests to join us for what we are going to do uh, on Fifth Sunday. Got a word um, just for, for, for you. Um, but on today, as we continue this series, I want to call your attention to Numbers chapter 27. Uh, I only want to look at five verses, five or six verses. Uh, Numbers chapter 27, verse 18 through 23. Numbers chapter 27, verse 18 through 23. I'll be reading from the ESV. Listen to what it says. It says, so the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man, watch this, in whom is the spirit, and lay your hands on him. Make him stand before Eleazar the priest and all the congregation and you shall commission him in their sight. Watch verse 20. You shall invest him with some of your authority that all the congregation of the people of Israel uh, may obey him. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall inquire for him by the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. At his word, that at Joshua's word, they shall go out and at his word, they shall come in both he and all the people of Israel with him, the whole congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and made him stand before Eleazar the priest and the whole congregation and he laid his hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord directed through Moses. Uh, thus far the reading of the word of God for, for the time that is ours on this morning and just for a brief, brief few moments on this morning, I want to engage you in the conversation from this subject. Uh, catch these hands. Catch, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about catch these hands. Amen. Catch these hands. Um, catch these hands. Speak, Lord, in this place. Amen. Uh, for many of us who um, like watching sports or like watching track and field, um, there's a particular uh, arena of track and field called the relay race. Isn't that right? And, and, and you know the relay race uh, is, is a race, Shima, whereby it really doesn't matter how fast or how athletic the athletes who are running are individually. Um, what, what matters more than just their individual athleticism is their ability to accomplish what they call the handoff, right? That, 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 that's, when, that's when one race, one runner is running, and when he gets to the end of his particular leg, he has to take the baton and 
pass it to the next person while at the same time, you know, giving all he has in his leg and the next person giving all that he has in his leg. So this person has to be running and he has to be able to grab the baton and the other person behind, even though his leg is over, he still has to have the ability to pass that baton on. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so the success of the relay race is not in an individual's strength, ability, or skill, but it's in the ability to be able to pass the baton once your leg is over. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? And so, and so, family, when I thought about that, I really thought about squad goals. I thought about our lives. And while we've looked at so many different areas of life and community and church life and family life there are there's this one particular area that's nagging in my spirit this one particular area that I believe that we need to hear and allow God to give us direction on and, and, and so then given this metaphor of the relay race hear this hear this as as really my thesis really hear this the successes of life are really measured by how well we transition. That, 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 that's my thesis. That, that, that's my thesis. The successes of life are really measured by how well we transition. And so then, just let me for a moment break that thing down like a fraction so I can be clear about what I'm saying. I'll offend you right from the front so you understand what I'm saying. When I talk about, when I talk about transitions, I'm talking about the handing of the baton from one person whose leg of the race is coming to an end on to the next person who's starting his particular leg of the race. And so when I say this, I'm talking about, watch, intergenerational transitions. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when I say intergenerational transitions, I'm saying that many of us who are in positions hold those positions as though they are lifelong appointments in the church, in the community, all around us. We see folk who don't want to let go of the influence and the power that they have in order to allow someone else who is coming from a generation uh, following theirs to be able to get that influence and power and carry on the leg, their particular leg of the race. Do you understand what I'm saying? And far too often, people's, whose, people whose leg of the race is over, who they've given it their best, but they don't want to let go of the baton. Intergenerational transitions, political transitions. Yeah, you, you, you take, take a moment and just think about the gridlock in Washington. Think about all of the hell that our country is catching, not because of you and I. Now, now think about this, family. Th th there's none of us, JJ, th there's none of us who have the right or, or who, who have the privilege to be able to have folk that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis that we disagree with. We still got to work with them folk. Isn't that right? We, we, even though we know they don't like us and even though we have uh, ide ideological disagreements, we still have to work with them but we send folk to Washington and they get to Washington and have the audacity to say this is my position and I'm not gonna budge right and then when you see when you begin to trace the record and see who they are one of the things that we begin to notice is that some of these people have been in power for years and years and years and never want to pass the baton on to the next generation of leaders who God is raising up. But listen, it's not only in the community and it's not only in our politics, but it's also in the church. Hello, somebody. It's also in the church. It's, it's, it's in the church where, where in, in, in leadership sometimes in, in, in particular positions, people get in positions and think it's a lifelong appointment. And God sends us everything we need. He sends us talent. He sends us abilities. But because we so hold on to titles, we so hold on to positions, we so ho hold on to semblances of, uh, of things that make us look good in other folks' eyes or get give us pride we hold on it so long that we pass up people who God wants to raise up among us in order watch this to carry the work on 
Do, do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? And, and, and so through, through this message, through this message, I'm simply trying to tell you that the successes of life are not simply measured by what you do and, and, and what those before you did, but it's measured by how well we can transition when our leg of the race is over. And so here's the B clause of my thesis. Here's the B clause of my thesis. In order to, to, in order to ensure the success, in order to uh, to secure and ensure the success we've got to be intentional watch this about mentoring about youth and children's ministry about young adult ministry and about developing new leaders and giving them opportunities when God is raising them up to serve yeah. Do, do, do you receive that? Again, we're talking about squad goals, right? We're talking about squad goals. And so in order for us to make sure that we have success, not only in one generation, but intergenerational success, I'm talking about for generations, we can have success, that our churches can, 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 can not only be successful based upon who the pastor is, but, but, but can be successful because we have multiple leaders who are being raised up and leaders who are in power are empowering others other leaders. Do, do, do you all receive what I'm saying? But sometimes the death that we see in our churches, in our communities, and in our politics, sometimes this death that we experience is a death by our own hands. Hello, somebody. And, 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 and listen, I hate to let you down. I hate to let you down, but that's what I mean uh, when I say catch these hands. That's, that, that's what I'm talking about when I say catch. And I hate to let you down because I know somebody, when you tuned in, you was like, yeah, Pastor E, about to teach us how to bob and weave up in this joint. Some of y'all think that a fighting spirit is a gift of the spirit, but I want to tell you, that ain't what we're talking about today, right? We, we ain't talking about, about, about fighting today, but, but when I talk about catch these hands, I'm talking about what the text says Moses did in front of the congregation he laid his hands on someone who was coming uh, somebody that God was using and was raising up he laid his hands on him in such a way that he imparted power he imparted courage he, he, he imparted he imparted wisdom he laid his hands on him and what I'm trying to tell you is that it's each of our responsibilities it's each of our jobs to look around us and see those who who God is raising up and be intentional about putting our hands on them in a positive way to mentor them and empower them and raise them up as new leaders in the church in the community in our politics and so and so each of us we've got to be intentional about developing relationships with generations who listen <laughs> be for real for real right some of some of, I, I look at my son right and, and I look at his generation bro and they don't do stuff nothing like what we did man right I, I was listening I, I had my little workout playlist on yesterday while I was working out man I had I had Buster Rhymes in that joint right I, I you know I know I'm telling on myself bro I, I had you know I had the 90s hip-hop in that joint right the plain version right the 90 hip-hop in that joint going in and I hear the music today that somebody said and I'd be like dog I don't get it man like how many problems you got a lot how many <laughs> You feel me? I, I, I don't get it, but guess what? But guess what? The, the, the same thing that I'm saying about my children, my parents said about me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like they, they used to, my daddy used to be like, let me let you, let me let you listen to some real good music. He'll put on some Lenny Williams and, and he'd be like, I, I, I love you. you. You know what I'm saying? And they called that real music. And, and my music, they said, it's not real music. But what you got to understand is just because the they're, they're, they're fads and trends are not like ours, just because they don't don't look like we look or dress like we dress doesn't mean that God is not using them because each of us have got to be used by God to be relevant in the generations that he's calling us to amen it, it, it is it is it is it is that classic it's that classic saying that you can't you can't have a, a, a eight track ministry uh, in an mp3 generation you, you feel what I'm saying but that's not just true in church. 
right? And, and so th- listen to me. Let me be for real, for real. Let me be for real, for real. And I'm not, I'm not trying to gas anybody up, but, that, but that's, this is the reason why. This is the reason why I'm thankful for this church. One of the reasons why. Just one of the reasons, one of the small things in the, in the midst of this quarantine that I say, I tell God thank you for. Because when I came here, there were certain things that I saw that, that I knew would help us to reach more technological advances. Do you understand what I'm saying? Technological investments. Investments in the next generation. And this church has been intentional about making those. So when, it, so when this quarantine hit, man, we ain't miss a beat, right? We like, let's do it then. Let's use the investments that we've made in order to reach more. But, but it goes further. Listen to me. It goes much further than just investments in technology. Amen. There are so many things that we got to do. So I hope to show you that in this, in this um, meager message today. But listen, watch this. Before I, before I dig into this, I want to show you that this is something that we see all throughout Scripture. So you, so you don't think I'm just cherry picking Scriptures. This is something that God has shown us all throughout Scripture. Think about it. When you look at Abraham and Lot. Abraham did his best to empower Lot, to raise Lot up, brought Lot with him. Now, it wasn't Abraham's fault that Lot, you know, didn't um, do what he was supposed to do. Amen? Look at Samuel and David. Look at the relationship between Ruth and Naomi. Do you see it? It is mentorship. It is a relationship of empowering the next generation. Look at Elijah and, and Elisha. I really started to preach that text. Elijah and Elisha. When he comes behind Elisha and he throws his mantle on him and he takes him throughout all of the terrain of Israel's history. Can you, can you imagine that? And, and, and he's telling him, if you stay with me when the Lord takes me, then God is going to make you, put you in the position of leadership that I'm in now. And watch this. He says, I want to have a double portion meaning I want to be the next prophet to the nation. And watch what happens in the story of Elijah and Elisha. And I'm getting ready to get to my, I'm getting ready to get to my points. And I promise you my points won't be as long as my introduction. But watch what happens. Elijah did eight miracles, eight recorded miracles in the Bible. But when you read the story of Elisha, he did 16 recorded miracles. Do you understand what I'm saying? He literally did double what his, what his predecessor did. Why? Because his predecessor empowered him before he died. Amen? He didn't leave the prophetic office vacant and, 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 and allow the, you know, death to happen and allow seasons of unfruitfulness to come. No, but while he was alive, he empowered him. Do you understand what I'm saying? We see this with Paul and Timothy and with Barnabas and Mark. And that's where we are in this text. In this text, Moses is getting ready to die. And God is getting ready to do um, those classic words that Martin Luther King echoed. I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the promised land. Well, that comes from Moses, right? Moses is getting ready to go to the mountaintop, view the promised land. But because of his own sin and disobedience, he's not able to enter the promised land, right? And so now before Moses dies, God takes tells him, you know, there's a young man that's been close to you for many, many years now, and I want you to empower him. I want you to lay your hands on him publicly so that everyone can see him and let them know he's the man that I'm raising up to fill your position. Amen? And so watch this, y'all. Here's what I want to do. There's three power words, just three power words that I want to lift from this text. Three power words that I want to lift from this text. And, and, and those power words will serve as reasons. Watch this. Reasons why we've got to be serious and intentional about being actively engaged with our youth, our children, our young adults, the up-and-coming leaders in our church, in our community. We've got to be serious about empowering them. Amen? Here's the first word. Here's the first word. Write this down. The first word is expiration. (laughs) Lord have mercy. Expiration. Somebody just say expiration. Well, here's what I mean by expiration. Expiration means it is acknowledging that our lives have an expiration date. Do do you understand what I'm saying? Our lives have an expiration date. Again, at this point in the text, Moses is getting ready to die. He won't be leading Israel into the promised land. And knowing that Moses' time is, is drawing nigh, God instructs Moses to lay his hands on Joshua and raise him up. 
And, 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 and as I was thinking about this family, as I was thinking about this joint right here, I thought about my boy uh, right here in the city, Reverend David Blaney. He just dropped a book called Three Things Every Man Must Know. Y'all to get y'all, get your hands on that book. It, it's dope. I got a couple copies in my office. Really, really good book. But the very first thing that, that he says that every man must know is their own mortality. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, 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 so, and so this is really what I'm, what I'm trying to say in the text is that, is that our lives have an expiration date. I don't know how many listen, and I'm just going to put this in a parenthesis. I don't know how many folk listening to me right now think that tomorrow is promised. Think that you got forever to get right with God. Think you got forever to get your business straight. You've been putting off forever starting that business, writing that book. You've been putting off forever going back. You've been putting off forever those things thinking that that you have time to get it right, but I need to serve as a warning to you now that all of our lives have an expiration date on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And what I'm simply saying now is that if your life has an expiration date on it, right, then what's going to happen to the influence, the power, the positions that you have once you expire? Do you understand what I'm saying? That the work and the assignment that God has laid to all of our hands to do is greater than just me. Do you all receive that? Watch this. Y'all, we are so personality driven, y'all. Right? Our, our, our American culture, we are all about personalities, man. Right? If, 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 if the right person says it, then people believe it. It, it could be just as false. It's just as wrong as two left shoes. But if a celebrity says it, then we give credence to it. If the right person in the right community and the right set of influence says it, people start to listen to it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because we are personality driven. But I'm trying to tell you that when it comes, I mean, that's fine when it comes to pop culture, but when it comes to our churches, when it comes to our communities, when it comes to our politics, it can't be simply about personalities. It can't be simply about celebrity. It's got to be about the work. Amen? Because personalities come and go but the work must go on hello somebody and so then when you recognize that your life has an expiration date then you will spend these days empowering somebody to come up behind you to take your place do you understand what I'm saying listen family I, I know all of us have pride I know all of us want to live forever and we will live forever with Jesus in glory you won't however live forever on this side of heaven and so as long as this side of heaven is in existence till Jesus comes back the work must go on and so let me ask you this question what area in your life do you need to be depositing in someone coming behind you and it's not necessarily you just depositing your gifts it may be some young person that you see has potential and you speaking encouragement to them you empowering them and are you giving them opportunities to serve you ever seen this I know it was like that uh, you know uh, uh, when I was coming up that dudes young young, young bros you know they'll get their daddy long old man and be walking around the neighborhood and be like hey man can I cut your grass do, do you understand what I'm saying and, and we ought to be excited about seeing young brothers who are willing to work and have an entrepreneur new spirit. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? And so we've got to spend some of our time, some of our influence, some of our power raising up, empowering and encouraging those who are coming behind us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can I say this? Listen, if you got two candles, if you got two candles, watch this. One has a flame on it and the other doesn't. It will not diminish the flame of the candle when you like the other. It doesn't diminish the flame. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the problem is we refuse to, to, to cede power to other people. We, we refuse to lift other people up. We refuse, you know, man, you, you let, let somebody walk in. You know, sister girl, you come in, you looking good. You slew footed one foot and toe in the other, right? You know you looking good. But let somebody come in who people think look a little bit better than you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then we like, oh, she thinks she, you know, but, but what I'm saying is why can't she look good and you look good too, right? Well, why 
can't, bro, bro, why can't you be doing your thing and he doing his thing too? We've got to be about empowering each other and, and lifting each other up, right? And speaking well of others, right? Because it does not diminish your flame by lighting the flame of somebody else who doesn't have a flame. Hello, somebody. And so the first thing is expiration. That is acknowledging that all of our lives have an expiration date. Amen. Who is that person around you? You've been walking by them, but you need to empower them. I'm not telling you to put them in position. I'm not telling you to for, forego your position, but I'm telling you to realize you have an expiration date and you ought to be passing on that knowledge. Don't let that knowledge die with you, right? Don't let that wisdom die with you, but pass it on. Here's the, here's the second thing. Watch this. This is going to bless you. The second thing is not only expiration, but the second power word is confirmation. Confirmation. God, confirmation. Here's the statement. Uh, This means that when we lay hands on the next generation, when we empower them, what happens is we confirm the work of the Lord in those coming after us. Y'all got to hear this. This is going to bless you. You got to hear this. Now, so there's this, this, this peculiar text, the first time that Joshua is really, really mentioned in the Bible uh, or given us a narrative. Because when Moses goes up to get, the, to get the Ten Commandments, the Bible tells us that Joshua is right there. It only says that in passing, right? But then in Exodus chapter 18 is the first time we really get a story about Joshua. Watch what it says. It says Joshua is fighting in Rephidim. He's fighting the Amalekites in Rephidim, right? In the field, he's leading the armies, and he's so, 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 do you see that already? Moses has given Joshua an opportunity to serve, right? And so he's leading the armies, right? And, but way yonder on the mountain, Moses is up there praying. He has Aaron the high priest, he said, as Ur, his brother-in-law. And the Bible says this, when Moses raised up his hands, Joshua won. When Moses let, got tired and let down his hands, Joshua lost, right? So now Moses is on the mountain praying, communicating with God. Joshua is in the valley fighting. Now, Joshua doesn't know anything about what's going on in the mountains. All he knows is that he's in the valley fighting. And one moment he's winning, and the next moment he's losing. But watch this, what it says at the end of Exodus chapter 18. And God said to Moses, here's the first hint. He says to Moses, write this episode in a book so that Joshua can read it. Lord have mercy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because watch this. Because if, Lord God, if, if Moses would not have written it in a book, then Joshua would have been thinking that all it took to get success was him fighting in the valley. Do you understand what I'm saying? But Moses wrote in the book so that he can know, yes, you need your education. Yes, you need, but you also need God as well. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? And what I'm saying is, is there's many people around us who God is working in but they don't yet understand what God is doing in their life how why God would allow this to happen but when you and I who have experience and, and wisdom when we come along and begin to say say to them listen life is not just about the physical but it's also about the spiritual it begins to confirm what God is already at work doing in their lives you got to get this y'all you got to get this God had been working in Joshua a long time before Moses laid his hands on him right but when Moses laid his hands on him it confirmed what God was already doing y'all y'all gotta hear me man y'all gotta hear me y'all gotta hear me there are so many people around us that God is tugging on the spirits God is working in the spirits you know and that they need the confirmation of, uh, of you to leave the coming in saying, you know, you did a good job. That was powerful the way you did that. You know what I'm saying? And, and that confirmation be like, well, maybe there's something here. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And we see it. We see it. It's all around us. God confirmed his work in Joshua through the tutoring of Moses, right? So here's, he, he, let me ask it. Let me make, I'm going to break that thing down like a fraction to make sure you understand it. My wife say, my wife always tells me, make sure you put that thing down so anybody can get it, right? And so, and so I wanted to make sure that I don't just give you plateaus, but I give you real, real, real deal meat and bones so you can swallow 
swallow this joint and it give you nourishment, right? And so how did Moses confirm God's work in the life of Joshua? Devin, he gave him an opportunity. <laughs> Doc, I was watching, uh, I, was try, I, was trying, I was trying to get some video feed, Doc, right? I was trying to get some video feed because I'm trying to do my little creative joint, right? Because it's Youth Sunday and I want to make sure that I, that I get some, show some footage of the youth. And bruh, wouldn't you know it, wouldn't you know it that I'm getting ready to preach this? And wouldn't you know it that the camera happens to pan on the music section and I see Devin standing at the drum cage while allowing the, the younger uh, musicians who are coming up to play the drums. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Giving them the opportunity to play and that's how you confirm God's work yeah you the one that's on staff yeah you the one getting paid to do it but yeah but I can use my power I can use my influence to give somebody else an opportunity because what that does is it confirms that God is working in my life you might miss a beat every now and then but you keep on licking that thing man and what's gonna happen is God will strengthen your abilities to do the work hello somebody give them an opportunity to serve Listen to me. Can, I, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Community leaders, you might be able to do it, but I dare you to allow somebody else to do it. You might be able to get the job done, but give somebody else a shot at doing it. And it might be confirming the work that God was doing. Listen, I told you already, I told you already that when Moses went to the mountain to get, to get the Ten Commandments, the Bible says he was there 40 days and 40 nights. But guess who was with him? Joshua. Right? Guess what Joshua did? Joshua had the opportunity to watch Moses interact with God. M Moses, Moses took the veil down and let Joshua see something that nobody else had an opportunity to see. See him commune with God. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to develop and build relationship with the younger people who are coming behind us. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? It's not just about teaching them the word of God, sending them to school, making sure that they have what their education, but, but, but we've also got to develop relationships with them. Man, go fishing with them girls, them boys and girls. Man, show them how to get their hair done. Show them how to tie. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the developing of the relationship that, that genuine conversations begin to happen. I, I don't know if I'm helping anybody today, but, but watch this. He, he put him as the head of the army, right? Gave him the opportunity, but then once he saw that Joshua was capable, that Joshua had talent and abilities, he increased his responsibility. And as you go through the book of Exodus and Numbers, you begin to see that more and more responsibilities Joshua is giving. Here it is in the nutshell. Look at it in the text. Here's what the text says. God says to Joshua, I mean to Moses, invest, <laughs> invest in Joshua. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, family. I'm trying to tell you that as a church, we've got to invest in those who are coming behind us, right? I'm telling you that as a, as a city, as a community, as a nation, we've got to invest in those who are coming behind us. All too often in our communities and in our churches, we stifle, we hinder, we handicap those who are coming behind us, right? Now, let me show you how we do that, real practical. Let me show you how we do it. In church, you know, Ellis ain't got no tithes and offering to give. He about to because that boy about to start working, Jesus. Amen. But, but listen, he don't have any tithes and offering to give. Y'all don't have any tithes and offering to give. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so I can't measure their value. I can't measure their contribution based on dollars and cents. Amen. In fact, I shouldn't do that with NAM member, right? But I definitely can't do that with the children because they don't have money to give. But what they do have, what they do have is an opportunity to receive the empowerment of those who come before us, right? So, so, so. If you don't think that's how it works, then just let me break this thing down for you right quick. Didn't somebody give you a shot, Nisha? Didn't, didn't somebody invest in you? Didn't somebody say something in you? Didn't somebody pass you when you know you should have failed? Right? Didn't, didn't somebody give you an opportunity? Right? So if somebody gave you an opportunity when you were yet unable to contribute, and now you've gotten the opportunity, and now you are able to contribute, what do you think God will do with those coming behind you? Hello, somebody. 
And so that means that, that if, if God has blessed you in such a way that God has brought people in and out of your lives who've invested in you, who've made deposits, who's encouraged you, Jesus said it this way, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. That means don't just be a recipient of encouragement, of investment, but be a giver of encouragement and, and investment. Amen? Pay it. That's right. Pay it forward. Somebody gave you a shot? Give somebody else a shot. Here's the last thing. I'm finished, y'all. Here's the last thing. The last thing is preservation. Yeah, preservation. Expiration, right? Confirmation. Preservation. Somebody say bars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Watch this. Preservation. When we are intentional about mentoring, about empowering, about lifting others up, watch what happens. It preserves the legacy that we've been working toward. Lord, have mercy. You got to receive this, and I, I promise you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you this, and, I, and I'll be done. Watch. God made a promise to Moses' ancestors. God made a promise to Moses' ancestors. Moses was a part of that promise. But Moses was not the fulfillment of that promise. He could not bring the children of Israel into the promised land. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? He couldn't do it, right? And, and so then the promise that God made about the promised land to Abraham all of those hundreds of years earlier, God fulfills it through Joshua. So, so you know what that means? What that means is while Moses helped further the work, right? The work didn't die when he died. The work had to go on. Somebody just say that the work must go on, right? And so the that there is so much that God is doing. I, I, I've tried to tell y'all this before, but I hope y'all can see it now, that God is outside of time. Teach Kim. God is outside of time. Do you know what that means? He is eternal. That means the way you and I see time is past, present, and future. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four. That's how we see time. But God is eternal. He's outside of time. You know what that means? The Bible says he sees yesterday just like it's today. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? That means tomorrow is today in God's eyes. And so God can see now what he wants to do way down yonder. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so what I'm trying to tell you is God has a plan that will exceed your existence. And so we've got to be intentional about depositing in the next generation because they are the ones that are going to fulfill their portion of the promise that God has made to mama and daddy. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Let me, let me say it like this. So what Abraham couldn't do, Isaac did. And what Isaac Isaac couldn't do, Jacob did. And what Jacob couldn't do, Joseph did. And what Joseph couldn't do, Moses did. And what Moses couldn't do, Joshua will now do. Hello, somebody. The work must go on. And all I'm trying to tell you is we are we, we are walking in that thing right now. Yes, we are. We are we are living in that thing right now because we are carrying on the work of our forefathers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your mama was praying about uh, the things that you are experiencing right now. Uh, your great grandmama uh, was asking God uh, for the right to vote and now uh, you are voting. Uh, your your grandmama uh, was asking for the right uh, to be accepted as equals and you are living in the dreams, uh, living in the promises uh, that God made uh, to your ancestors. Uh, and all I'm trying to tell you uh, is just like they did their part uh, and empowering you and raising up you, so must we uh, do our part uh, to empower the next generation because the work must go on. Throw another pin at me, man. Dreams are yet to be fulfilled. Promises are yet to be fulfilled. God ain't done yet. Hello, somebody. We have experienced great things, but God is not done yet. Is there anybody here that believes it? Lord, I feel that in my spirit. The work is too great. The legacy is too important. The future is too bright for it to die with any one of us. But Lord, let me do my part. And when my part is over, I'll pass the baton. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that feels that?
kill that thing all in my spirit. I'm sorry, y'all. I just want to tell you this. I'm going to run the leg of my race with all of my strength and with all of my skill and ability. But when my leg is over, I'm willing to pass the baton. I'm willing to lift somebody up. I'm willing to empower somebody else. Hear me now. Hear me now. Hear me now. We are not successful until we invest in the success of someone else. Hello. Bro, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, you ain't making it if your whole family broke, dog. You know, you, do, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? Listen to me, listen to me. Listen, we are not successful. I mean, like, really successful. You know, I, I ain't talking about, you know, you got a few dollars over your bills. You know, you, you, you make $10, uh, you know, make, you make $100 a month, and you got $110 at the end of the month. You understand what I'm saying? That's not successful. Successful is when you can walk in it, and God blesses you in such a way that you are able to help somebody else walk in it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Y'all listen to me now. Think about them blessings that you're praying and asking God for. Think about all the things, all the doors you are asking God to open for you. Man, don't you know what God would do if he knew that you and I had a spirit to, to take some of what he's given us and help somebody else? But God knows the only thing you want to do is get you some red bottles, man. All you want to do, right? But, but, but if we take some of what God has blessed us with and bless ourselves, be a blessing to our families uh, and pass some of that on uh, to those coming behind us. God will bless us over and in abundance. And so, man, I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. Because, you know, we, we say this all the time, man. Jesus died. He buried and and early Sunday morning he rose with all power don't we say that we said it all the time right I mean that's exactly what I'm saying right now listen to what the Bible says Jesus says to the disciples hear me now Jesus says to his disciples I'm getting ready to go to the cross and, and I'm God yeah I'm God but but my time on this side of the heaven of heaven is over three years three and a half years I'm out but watch what he says he says, greater work than that which you've seen me done, do, you shall do. You shall do greater work than these, right? And then watch what he says. He says, because I know, <laughs> listen to me, I know that you've got to carry this work on. I'm going to do what? The Bible says he breathed on them and he gave them an investment of power. He gave them the Holy Spirit. Isn't that what God did for you? God, God knew that the work was too great, so he invested in you. He not only gave you blessings, but he gave you the Holy Spirit so that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. He gave you his spirit so you can know I'm more than a conqueror. He gave you his spirit so that you can know I am an overcomer in all things. Do you understand what I'm telling you? And so that which God has done for us, Jesus recognizing his expiration. Jesus confirming the work in each and every one of you, right? And then Jesus perpetuating that thing by making significant deposits in our lives. Isn't that right? So that when you come to church, man, I, I said it last week, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> but we all grab the mic and we got a whole ensemble in this joint, right? And we all do our part to carry on the work. Do you receive the word? Do you receive the word on today? And so, somebody threw a pen at me, man. I don't know who did it. I hope y'all caught that on tape, bro. Uh, listen, as our praise team comes back up, y'all, I want to tell God thank you for all of you again joining us on today. I pray that something was said that would challenge us and help us to be a blessing to someone coming after us and behind us just like so many have done for you and I listen I want to offer Christ to you now I want to tell you that as we talked about that expiration date none of us know what tomorrow is going to bring and so it would behoove you to get right with God today Jesus said this the day that you hear my voice harden not your heart 
and perhaps God is speaking to you now I want to invite you to come into a saving relationship with Jesus listen no work that you can do can save you it's simply by trusting that Jesus has already done the work amen and because he's done the work he will save you right now say Lord Jesus save me come into my life fill me with your spirit and Jesus made this promise those who come to me I will in no wise cast them out would you do me this favor visit our website you see it there on your screen mountpilgrimlc.org there you can learn more about Christ you can learn more about our church well family we want to pray God's blessings upon you now we will sing like we do every Sunday these blessings to you now. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. And keep you. The Lord keep you. Make his face shine. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious. Be gracious to you. To you. Lord, turn the Lord turn his his face toward, toward you. you the Lord give you peace give God bless you family Oh.